I have before me the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 and the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13, two thin and light laptops. Um, the Samsung is extremely thin and light and I'll pull up the weight and thickness here on the screen for you. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's almost half of the X13. It's absolutely crazy how thin and light this laptop is and it packs a lot of performance. I'm gonna get into that in just a few minutes. But let's go over some of the features and you know the battery life and the screen brightness and all that first. And then we'll go ahead and jump to the performance later in the video. Now, first and foremost, the ports and connectivity on the X13 are slightly better. As you can see on the left side panel, we have the Republic of Gamer. Uh, you have the XG Mobile port, which also hides at USB type C. We have the HDMI and we have a headphone jack. And then on the right side panel, we have a USB type C and a USB type A. However, on the Galaxy Book, we have two USB type C's plus one. So three USB type C's, a headphone jack and a micro SD card slot. Now, I do like that this comes equipped with so many USB type C's. Um, the three is definitely helpful, especially if you want to hook up more external monitors and such. However, I think the flexibility of the different types of ports on the X13 is advantageous to the model. So I would say in, from regards to port standpoint, I feel like the X13 wins out a little bit. Now, looking at the assembly and build quality of each of these laptops, we have an aluminum chassis here with the Samsung Galaxy Book. It's assembled very well. Really impressed with the assembly of this laptop. Bottom cover fits into the side panels very nicely. No catchy edges and um, passes the tap test very well. Looking at the X13, this is a magnesium alloy chassis. It feels a little bit thinner to the touch, which makes it feel kind of plasticky. Um, so you're definitely gonna have a more refined feel to the touch in regards to the Book 2. Uh, compared to the X13, but they're both assembled very nicely. No catchy edges on the X13 either. Um, this is just more of a refined business laptop. This does have a little bit of that creator gamer vibe going on with it. Um, so it's slightly less professional, but still with that dark chassis and a very discreet gamer logo here, the Republic of Gamer logo. It really is still a very simple looking laptop. Now keep in mind, we do have a dedicated GPU in the X13, but for the battery life result you see coming up on the screen right now, I actually have the GPU turned off inside of the Armory Crate Center. It's running on something called Eco Mode, and that's getting us fantastic battery life for the X13. But hold the phone because the Book 2 has just as good of battery life for streaming and productivity. However, when it comes to creator tasks like video editing and Photoshop work, you can see that the X13 has a better battery life overall. So from battery life standpoint, if you're a creator, the X13 is the way to go. Now they're both two-in-one touchscreen laptops. Um, as you can see, flip it over, um, bam, flip it over. There we go, both touchscreen laptops. This is the 15 inch model. It also comes in a 13 inch model, um, but they are 16 by nine aspect ratio laptops where the X13 is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So if you're looking for a smaller laptop, but still want a little bit of you know different screen real estate uh, aspect ratio, then the X13 is a great choice. Um, now regarding the color accuracy and color gamut range, they are both very close in that perspective. So really either one will work for color accuracy, color gamut range for digital artists, photographers, designers, and video editors. Now you're gonna get a little bit more bang for buck out of the keyboard and trackpad from the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 compared to the X13. As you can see, it has a much larger glass trackpad. I mean, it literally dwarfs this one. Now keep in mind, like I said, this is the 15 inch model. Um, so it is to be expected that it has a larger trackpad. But since we are comparing these two, you'll win out with this model. Now it does have a numpad on the right side where the X13 does not. So that is definitely advantageous as well if you're somebody who commonly uses the numpad. Keep in mind, there's a medium key press here on the X13 where there's more of a short key press here, more of an ultra book keyboard happening here on the book too. So whatever your preference is, keep that in mind. Now here's a quick audio sample of me using both the keyboards and trackpads. So you can hear what they sound like in use.
In regards to the webcams on the top bezel of each of the screens, here's a quick sample of me using each of the webcams. Here is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on this Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 and of course a little sample of the microphone for you. And lastly for the test, here's a quick audio sample of the speakers in use so you can see what they sound like. I'm freaking stoked about the Patreon that we're about to launch. Absolutely. We're launching a freaking Patreon and you should join because it's going to be awesome. We're going to have never before seen content on the channel. Patreon, not channel, channels YouTube. So why is this content not being posted to YouTube? Well, the answer is really simple. I know that there is a tight group of loyal followers that follow my content and I want to reward and be a part of the tight loyal community that we have been building here as we've been reaching 85,000 subscribers. And I want to go deeper with you guys. I want to do live Q and A's. I want to get face to face with you and chat in a live video call with my most faithful subscribers. I want to repurpose that content and put it on my channel so you can then be featured in my channel with me. I want to do exclusive giveaways that I can't just launch to the masses of communities. There's sometimes I get to keep laptops, but I don't need them. And so it's a place for me to basically just give back to my most loyal community followers. So how hot do each of these laptops get? Well, in regards to the thermals for the 4K export, we see a wider range of thermal temperatures coming out of the book too. I think the modes inside of the computer, you can quickly switch by going to the function button and then clicking F11, that will change through the different performance modes. Whereas the X13, you click function and then the fan modes and it clicks through them. Now you see a bigger difference in the thermals inside of the chart on the book too. You can see we range from 55 degrees Celsius all the way up to 77 degrees Celsius. Whereas in the X13, we see about a 72 degrees Celsius up to 75 degrees Celsius. So they're in the same range as far as thermal temperatures are concerned. But as we're about to jump into the performance section, you'll see that they actually share similar performance results. Kicking it off in Geekbench single core and multi-core, you can see that they're pretty much neck and neck in single core performance. But as soon as we get into multi-core performance, we get about a thousand points more from the X13. So if you're a big multiple program user, I would recommend the X13 as it has better multi-core performance. Let's say you have Spotify or iTunes Music open, as well as Google, maybe Premiere Pro and Photoshop all at the same time. The X13 will handle that a little bit better than the Book 2. Now, moving on to Cinebench R23 single core and multi core, pretty similar story. We see more single core performance out of the book too, but not by much. But then, as we move into multi core, again, you can see a substantial difference between the X13 being better than the book too. Moving on to the Photoshop benchmark, man, they are neck and neck. The Book 2 is one of the best optimized laptops with the i7-1260p processor. It's only 26 points behind the X13, so really, really great results for the Book 2. Very impressed with it. Now, as you move on to Premiere Pro playback, you have to keep in mind that the X13 has a dedicated GPU, which makes an advantage for it inside of Premiere Pro. So as you can see at full quality 4K, we dropped 236 frames. At full quality 4K for the X13, we dropped zero frames. Now, you can see that there's 6K B-RAW on the X13 chart. I was unable to efficiently run 6K B-RAW on the Book 2. So if you are even considering 6K footage, I would lean you toward the X13 all day long. It's going to handle that much better, where the Book 2 just isn't going to handle it. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, punch for punch, choosing one of these laptops is really going to come down to my use case. If I'm a video editor, it really makes more sense to go with the X13 with a dedicated GPU. And especially if you're getting into a little light 3D modeling or even light motion design, that dedicated GPU will help out a lot. However, if I'm a digital artist, graphic designer, or photographer, and I'm on the go and I want to have a two-in-one laptop, laptop. You can get a two-in-one laptop with the X13. However, you're going to get more out of this larger trackpad 
Uh, with graphic design and digital art, I know this will be helpful. And of course, the two-in-one screen will allow you to touch up stuff with a pen. Um, so overall, punch for punch, the functionality for artists makes more sense with the Book 2. It's very thin, very light, very on-the-go friendly, and you don't need a dedicated GPU for digital art, graphic design, or photography. Let me know in the comment section below which one you're considering and what you'll be using it for. I'm very curious. Otherwise, links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase and likes of this video has brought you some value. I'll see you here in the next video.